Hi there and welcome to Aid's Workshop or in this particular case Aid's Kitchen. So this is part 10 and the final part plan F of the tool post grinder series. So first of all let me show you plan F. Well plan F That's the maximum. Plan F seems okay. Now that's quite flimsy. I'm going to work out what thread that is. I'm going to make a piece of tube again that slides over there. So now that you know what plan F is, it's making this adapter. Finally, I put a slot in it just to make it easier to access the nut once it's together. Slight change of plan again, make it up as you go along, that's my style. So, yeah, plan F, making the adapter. So, in this episode, the final episode, we'll take you through designing and making the adapter. And we'll face it off. I haven't said to go yet. I want to drill it out 17 mil diameter for weirdly an M19 by 2 thread. Straight in with a 16 first. And I'll go in about 20 mil deep. The thread only has to be 12 mil. And I'm going to relieve it out from the other side. Bigger. So that I'm, when I'm screw cut the thread, I'm going through into an opening. Or an undercut as it were. Do me as far as that in. Yeah, it's a good 20 mil. And we'll open that up to 17 now. Good move, 17. Bit of a racket. Going through from the other end, I'm going to drill it out to 20 mil, and that will be the undercut on the 19 mil thread at the back. More than an undercut. I will have to bore this end out a little bit afterwards. So let's see where we are then. Piece of aluminium bar. I've just roughed it out. It's about 29 diameter. I may skim the outside afterwards. I've drilled it out in the front here with 20 mil drill and in the back edge here with a 17 which I'm going to thread so the 20 is clearance for the screw cutting tool to run into and it's closer to what will fit on the grinding spindle. Now I'm looking for an overall length of 70 mil I'm on about 74, 73 and a half something like that so we'll just face it back. We'll just take a cut 
In fact, probably the simplest way of doing this, if I just go up to the head end here, oh, try not to bang the camera, and right back against the drill, so I'll just touch the tool there, set myself a zero, come back, and we'll face this down, that's on 72 and a half there, Alright, that's 73 and a half, sorry. I'll just give this a skim. We want 70 mil finish. So I'll do about 70.5. There. There. Bit more. Can't see very well there. I'll get that out of the way in a minute. There we go. that 70 mil. We'll just speed it up a bit. Put a finishing cap across there. So that's it, face to length. So we'll have a nice big chamfer on that front edge. Got my 45 degree tool in. Yeah, a bit more. And yeah, that looks nice. And that's ready now for me to bore it out to fit on the spindle of where are we that's got to be bored out to fit over the spindle diameter here and as you can see it doesn't fit at the moment so i think we'll put a boring bar up and we'll do that now and i'll also take a skim off the outside so that i've got a true reference point to that ball so so i'm looking for a diameter in here about 20.1 20.15 something like that i don't need a super fit I'll just touch on the wall, take a scratch and another measure. There we go. Put a tiny cut on. Probably go in about 30 mil. We'll call that out zero. 30 mil in there. Oh, there's my little brush. There it is. Well, that's measuring up. Actually, measuring up around the 20.1 mark. Let's just try it. That's a bit fitty, I want it to be sliding, but it just it's just starting. So if I take yeah something like another point zero two aside, we'll try that. Let's try that. Spray it. WD in there. Back into my zero should do it. This. I want to try it again. See, I just want a nice running fit in here. I don't want it tight or anything. That'll do me nicely. Oh, you've seen me do this many times. What was that? Something fell off the shelf over the other side there. Leave in reverse. And we'll have a chamfer on the inside. Just there. Now I'll do it. Right, so that's the one end done. I'll just take a skim on the outside so I've got a reference point. Back up with a normal turning tool and then we'll turn it round. I dare say some of you have noticed that when I'm turning, I have got my lathe tool stuck out. As you can see, it's about uh, 28 mil stuck out from the tool holder. Now, normally you drop this right back in so you haven't got this big overhang. 
And the only reason I do that, well, it's, it's, in fact, sometimes I have to if I'm turning up close to the centre up here, just to give me the clearance on the body in my centre. But the reason I stick it out that far is purely to give better vision for the camera. Um, but when I'm turning, you know, light aluminium, small cuts that I'm taking here, uh, it doesn't cause a problem being stuck out this far. But normally, you would have this, you know, just stuck out, say it's a 12mm square tool, which is, is you'd probably have it stuck out 12, 14 mil, something like that, just to give you, you know, the room to clear everything on the back edge here but I have got it stuck out probably twice as far as necessary but as I say it's purely so that I can get a better whoop, a better view with the camera so we need to be going forwards not reversed and I'm just going to take a scratch off the OD just to give me a reference point that's running through to the ball Tight there. I'm going to have to take another cut off that. It hasn't quite cleaned up. Too close to the jaws. Another point one up the diameter. Little spray. Heat her up. That should be my finishing cut there. Yeah, that's it. Turn it round. I've got a bit of paper towel here. And I've got all sorts of dust and what have you building up on here. So I'll just give it a, I brushed it off first. Just give it a clean off. Nice bit of uh, paper towel there. Right. Now, although it's aluminium, even when I bring it down, it's because it's a small chuck or what have you, I don't tend to get bad marking, um, you know, as long as I'm not wrenching on the chuck key. But I should be more than tight enough, you know, that pretty much does me. I'll just check that it's running true, but I don't, you know, I normally you could put a bit of cardboard behind each jaw, but then you start to get more run out and what have you. But I don't get bad marking on the... Uh, on my parts as long as I'm not wrenching down on these jaws so otherwise I would use some protection you know behind each one of the jaws bit of cardboard something like that with aluminium would be ideal just to stop marking the part but when it is an important part I'll either find some other way of holding it or I'll put some protection underneath each one of the jaws so we know we're approximately to that now that I turn it around I can see it is running true. I'm just going to take a little scratch off this face. I know it would affect my 70mm length, but uh, it's not critical. It's a nominal size. There we are. So I'm just going to bring this in and blend the two together. From there. And then one 
one line at a time on my hand wheel. Just until I get that slight blend and then I just polish the OD then. Probably get away with one more. Tiniest bit more, it's not even a line on my hand wheel. That's pretty much blended those two. Uh, I think we'll have a big chamfer on the end. Again. Bring the quarter slide tool up. Swap them over. Again, this tool stuck out a mile as well, but for the same reason to give a better view for the camera. That'll do for that. So, I'm going to take a scratch through here with the boring bar. Double check my thread this time so that I don't make a major cock up. <laughs> and look at finding a screw cutting tool that I can bore that out with to put what First of all, appears to be an M19 by 2 thread, but I'll have a look. I have a little dilemma with this thread on the end of here. It's a plastic moulded thread, and as you can see, it's sort of moulded in two halves and what have you. Now, if I measure the OD, um, you know, it's, it's very difficult to sort of get an ideal measurement because it is moulded and it's smaller across each individual threads and bigger and what have you. It's measuring 19 to 19.01. Now... 19, 19.01 is three quarters an inch. So first question, is it a 19 mil thread, which is an oddball, or is it some sort of imperial? Now, if I measure across the pitches, again, with it being a moulded thread, some threads look fatter than others as I'm looking down. It's very difficult to tell. It, I've tried the gauges in there and at no chance because the threads are all up, down, all sorts. It's a moulded thread. It could be three quarter 12 TPI. If I measure th three threads across the peaks, I'm getting six mil or 6.3, depending on where you measure. So it could be a two mil pitch or it could be a 12 TPI. So three quarter 12 TPI, three quarter inch 12 TPI would be three quarter BSF. However, if it's 19 by two mil pitch, it's going to be a lot easier for, for me to screw cut. Now, again, I've tried to measure the angle with the pitch gauges. and In some positions, it looks like 55 degrees. And in other positions, it looks like 60 degrees. It's really difficult to tell. Is it a metric? Is it imperial? Or what have you. But with it being plastic, and with it being sort of just a moulded thread and having a bit of give in it, I've come to a decision. I'm going to do M19 by 2 pitch and the reason for that is and i'll show you this so as i was saying the reason for that is if i look at my tpi for the lathe and the workings out in the standard chart i dare say there would be a way to do 12 tpi but it goes 10 11 14 19 20 22 28 so on and so forth so doing 12 tpi without working it all out backing into the gears and what have you to see what i've got that may be able to do 12 tpi is going to be very difficult there aren't even combinations of 12 on there um you know uh well no there, there's nothing there that's divisible by 12 to even start working it out by halving numbers and what have you so as we said i'm going to do 19 by 2 and hope for the best it is only a plastic thread at the end of the day so again, when I look at the thread on here, the radius is on the top and in the valleys are much larger than you'd normally expect for a metric thread. So with it being 2mm pitch, you'd normally expect, if it was 19, you'd expect a 17mm pilot. Measuring into the router there, we're about 17.6, something like that, because of the large radiuses at the bottom of the thread form. So I've just opened up this 17 and I'm going to go for about 17.5, which this should be the finish, finishing cut. So 
they say it's only about 12 or 14 mil of thread in here. Just wind that off. That should be around the 17.5, 17.6 mark. 17.54. That'll do me nicely. So I have to grind up some sort of screw cutting tool with a nice radius on the bottom. You know, sort of trying to match up to the die grinder and screw cut M19 by 2 in there, or the approximation of M19 by 2 that's on the end of the grinder. Similar sort of screw cutting as you've seen me done before. Put it in forward, cross slide to zero, put a cut on, start her up. I'm not going to disengage the uh, lead screw for this. Stop, put it in reverse, wind the tool out, one full turn, start her up. It's only 10 mil long. Bring it back out. I'm out, stop. Cross like back to zero. Cut on with the compound. I'm actually bringing a cut. Because I'm winding out instead of in, which you would do with an external thread, I'm attacking the back flank or the rear flank of the thread instead of the forward flank. So back and forward, start her up, take cut. I'm going into a big undercut here, so no problem. Wind the compound off, put it in reverse, bring it back out. I'll bring it around the other side so you can see this in a minute. So exactly the same every time, back to forward, cross slide back to its zero mark, put a cut on with a compound and wind her in. And stop, reverse, wind off, bring her out. Stop, forward, back on, put a cut on, start her up. I'm only taking part one at a time. Stop her, reverse, wind off, always wind off, and back out. Okay, I'll bring you into a different position so you can see better what I'm doing. So I wind my cut back on. To zero on my cross slide. Put her in forward, put a cut on with a compound, run the cut through. And stop, wind off one turn, lay in reverse, bring it back out. I'm leaving the lead screw engaged all the time, actually for a two mil pitch. I could put my thread dial indicator on and come in on any number according to the thread chart. But for the purpose of this, just a short little thread, um, I'm quite happy to leave it engaged. So, back into the zero with my cross slide, put a cut on, lay in forward, take a cut. And stop, lay in reverse, wind the cross slide off back out again. I'm sure you get the message by now the way I'm doing it. Now the lathe tool I'm using here, let's just stop that. It's a piece of 10 mil key steel. It's got a, I think it's a 5 mil hole drilled through it, a grub screw up the end, I think it's an M4 grub screw, and it's got a, an old centre drill, pushed through, ground into the correct profile for the thread, and tightened up on the grub screw. So yeah, basically I've only, the only hardened bit is the tool that's sticking out the end, and this is a piece of 10 mil key steel, which is very rigid indeed and doesn't deflect too much. But I have used it with steel, I, you know, uh, for screw cutting steel, that sort of thing. But yeah, no problem for doing this aluminium, and I'm just gonna carry on and go out to my 19 diameter. Well, we've come to the moment of truth time. I'll buy that. Happy days. I think we got it. So it all goes together. This end screws onto the grinder. I put a liner on here, which is where I want the top face to be. So I've so that the grinder's in the correct sort of uh, rotational orientation with a switch on top, basically. 
and I need to access the two flats on this nut so that I can do it up when it's attached. So what I'm thinking now is I'm going to put a cutout perhaps halfway through this collar 10mm wide to allow myself a spanner to go in and I want it to start or the slot to be between 20 and 30 millimeters from the end of the shaft so I'll go 20 mil and then a 10 mil slot or it might be a 12 mil wide slot what have you it doesn't matter that important see what cutter I got and I'm going to cut a slot from this face where this line is halfway through this still have plenty of support and I'll be able to get access with a little spanner let me just show you the little spanner where is it where is it where is it the little spanner that goes down on the collet I may need to modify this spanner a bit just take a bit of the meat off the uh, off the outsides just to give me a bit more space but as you can see it's you know it's not far off so it may need a little bit of modification it's going to be coming to about here maybe maybe have to modify it a little we'll see so next job set up for cutting a slot through that so i got the milling slide up all set up all square all where i want to be I'm taking about 0.5 cuts just sprayed it with a bit of wd got a 12 mil in mil in here it's all nice and solid we speed that up a bit and the way I've got it clamped in the vise here I should be able to get just beyond halfway or just before halfway I should say so it's a slot so I can cut both directions just taking it gently Give it a spray now and again. And of course, this will give me access to the. Uh, well, hopefully, give me access to be able to do up the co little collet nut on the uh, on a little electric grinder. We're just about breaking through here. Nice and quiet this job. I'm uh, just I want to get loaded into a false sense of security and have a crash here because it's cutting so nicely. Anyway, so I'm going to pass as you can see. I've got pretty quickly. Uh, what am I about 26 diameter? So it's going to be the email mil. I want to be so. It's going to be about 25 passes, but as you can see, the passes are pretty quick. That's three, three and a half, back the other way gently. Now, I probably could take quite a big cut here, but uh, I'm in no rush, and I don't want to crash it. Put a bit of time into this so far with a screw cut and what have you. Probably, uh, yeah, it's probably a, an hour's work in there. So, for the sake of 15 minutes to waste another hour making another one, sometimes a bit of patience is needed. You see, I'm about a third of the way already. I'll bring you back when I'm somewhere near. This could be a shot from a different angle. As you can see, we're getting in there, probably halfway. It's getting really nicely, though. So I've got a cutter in that's directly in the headstock in an MT3 12mm collet. It's a 12mm cutter. Drawbar pulling the collet back. It runs nicely. A little bit deeper, it's about three quarter mil cut this time. Give it a squirt. So it's broken through the ball quite a while ago now.
pieces we've got the carriage rock I don't like the carriage come forward half a mil so half the point seven not that worried and then back the other way I set the position of the cut using the vertical slide set it up roughly where I wanted it first and then dropped it in with a, a rule measurement for the from the cutter to the bottom with a vertical slide block the vertical slide off and I got a 12 mil 12 mil wide slot with that once I've first finished it and what I might do once they've gone to depth is just bring the vertical slide up a touch and cut back across the bottom and then down a touch cut back across the top to give me a nice nice finish nice space so to speak no one could ever accuse me of having a nice space but you know most of my work does <laughs> Just thought I'd say it before somebody else did. <laughs> okay. We'll bring it back. We'll bring you back where we're on the last couple of cuts and I'm going to cut it right down until I'm almost touching my vice and that's next door's uh, strimmer happy day timed that well or not well there we are that gives me access to the nut I will have to have a little bit of a jiggle with the spanner have a play about with it I can take it so far with the pliers um, but the spanner I can get very little movement and there are only two flats if it was a hexagon it would be a bit better but uh I'm going to have to have a little play with a spanner. So yeah, slot cut, deburred all the way around. Happy days. So just tap this through with the M5 tap. There we go. I just run a little uh, run a little deburr on the top of there and we'll fit a bolt and give it a try so I fitted the bolt in the end of it I've got a collet in there little collets loose screw my adapter on it's quite a nice fit that thread on there right I'll slide it over here the spindle here should go up through the collet, it does, right up to very nearly the back, just finger tighten that, I've got a little lock button, hang on let me see if I can, there's a little lock button for the spindle on this uh, grinder so I haven't modified the spanner yet, I can come down through the slot, I'll just use a long nose pliers, that's tight. Tighten a little screw on there and switch on, push the switch and we're away. That's flat out. and down to slow it's not getting hot you just uh, loosen that off a touch happy day Vary in speed a little. Not getting hot, so that's a good sign. 
ครับไม่หวังแกสิก็ยาก pretty much complete All that remains now is to try it out on something. I think I'll have a play with it on some scrap and what have you. Uh, I've got a little diamond for dressing the wheel. Might have to rig something up to dress it in the in the correct plane, as it were, wherever the uh, wherever my compound is sat. So put it approximately square and then dress it by winding the uh, the compound against maybe a diamond here. Might have to make up a little block to put the diamond on, something like that. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, that's the unit finished. Now, long term, whether this is going to be any good or not, I don't know. We'll see. But it works. It's doing what it was supposed to do. Seems to. So there you have it, the tool post grinder. Success level lower than usual on this one. I'd say about seventy-five percent success. The unit itself looks nice. I think it will be all right to be used lightly and for very short periods of service. In the long term, I don't think it's as hardy as it could be. Going forward on it, I think what I will do is change the back end here for a pulley, get a DC motor of some sort with another pulley on it and a belt, variable voltage DC motor, maybe a variable power supply, and drive it with a separate DC motor via a belt to remove any vibration that I might get through the spindle. And again, change the type of grinding wheels, maybe go for something with like a quarter inch shank on it, what have you. So maybe a, a separate adapter on the end. So yeah, that was the tool post grinder. I had a bit of fun doing it. It's one of those jobs where <laughs> it's, uh, as you go along, you think, oh my goodness, what have I got myself into here? Um, I showed it warts and all as I went along, my mistakes, my remedies, everything as I go along. That's the way I like to do it. That's Everybody's got to learn and work things out as you go along. It's all very well being like brilliant on CAD and designing something all up, you know, beforehand and then knowing exactly where you're going to go. But when it's sort of experimental work, which is what this is, it's... Uh, experimental work i've never made one of these before i've made small spindles and what have you before actually not quite true many years ago i made a tool post grinder for a much larger lathe that was based on a big three-phase motor on a fabricated stand that was belt driven and that had you know like a six inch cylinder which had the bearings in it was a big one and took uh, i think there were about 12 inch by two inch wide grinding wheels so Hardly a tool post grinder, that one, on the sort of small hobby lathes that we're looking at. But yeah, multi, multi, mega time scaled down version of it. And it was a bit of fun along the way. And it did show quite a few different machining operations that some of you may find useful for different bits of machining as you go along. Um, again, the main body of it, as a boring bar holder with a smaller hole rather than that 20, to take boring bars is it's great it's just like the one i use for my boring bar holder so at least i've shown how to make that if nothing else so i hope you've enjoyed it guys thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing cheers guys <laughs>